those vulnerable members of your family who you've persuaded to get vaccines for very real reasons, you are not going to be passing on that, the virus to them. You're going to be better able to protect them. OK, I'm going to... I'm just... I'm, I know we could talk about this for the entire programme. I want to talk about it for a good chunk, which I think we have. But so many of you asked about this next point that I'm going to... I would be remiss of me if I didn't get it in. So let's hear from Hasiba, Hasiba Bakari. Is Boris Johnson causing irreversible damage to the reputation of the Conservative Party in order to save his own position? Yes. Right. Now, we've been talking about this for a lot of weeks. Uh, we haven't got an awful lot of time left on the programme, but as I say, so many of you put in questions about this. I felt we had to tackle it again. There have been, as I say, what, four or five resignations uh, today, this evening. Crispin. We are plainly going through um, a, a huge... Uh, crisis in terms of confidence uh, in the Prime Minister and the, and the government as it's presented uh, in the media around uh, the pattern of behaviour in Downing Street uh, and the Cabinet Office uh, over the last uh, two years. Uh, no one should uh, deny that. Uh, but what is sitting behind that is the Prime Minister's former Chief of Staff um, who has then uh, uh, sitting there uh, leeching out a bit by bit information into the media. So you're talking about Dominic Cummings, obviously. I am. Because um, uh, his who... current chief of staff has just resigned. Well, I'm talking about Dominic Cummings. Right, OK, just so um, we're clear. And, uh, uh, and uh, we are seeing um, the media then uh, cheerfully uh, uh, picking all this up and then and the stories uh, then are coming out bit by bit. By bit. You have to ask yourself um, uh, whether or not uh, we're being played here. Oh, um, and I think that we are, and we should understand the circumstances. Now, none of that um, uh, means that we shouldn't be uh, yes, conscious yes. about uh, the effect it has on people who have uh, very properly followed the rules very precisely um, and, uh, and then uh, understandably extremely cross. You did say you they, thought quite what, a few people what, probably they, hadn't followed the rules earlier. Saying. Sorry? You did say you thought quite a few people probably hadn't followed the rules earlier. Indeed. But, I mean, but, but a lot of people would have done. Um, and it's those people who, who I can understand their, uh, their, their real annoyance. Um, but I'm not saying, hang on a minute. Uh, we'll have to be reasonably quick, take, Crispin, forgive uh, me, right, just because we've got an awful lot of time. I think it's, it's necessary for yeah. us to actually have a bit of perspective here. Um, about exactly what we are charging okay. uh, the Prime Minister with. So let's just take a step back. Oh, no, no, hang on, Christian, because otherwise no one's going to get a word in edgeway. So, uh, Tim. Uh, the, the Conservative argument for the last couple of weeks has been we need to stop talking about the Prime Minister and talk about the other ways the country's in a mess, uh, like inflation or like energy bills and things like that. It's rather, I, Boris, Boris Johnson is a phenomenon. I'm among, uh, Boris Johnson is a phenomenon. I'm amongst a minority uh, who, who rather likes him, actually. And, and he reminds me of a character in an Ocean's Eleven film where technically he may well be a con man and he might be the bad guy, but you want to see if he gets away with it. Are you saying he's like and George how Clooney? He did it. Um, or Brad Pitt? The, Which the one are you choosing? <laughs> <laughs> but what I, what I would say is that the way you framed the question was very interesting. What damage is he doing the Conservative Party? And you've got to understand that this is why it's difficult for the Conservative Party to decide what to do about him. Because the Conservative Party suspects that the reason why it has its majority is Boris Johnson. That he is the only man who could have got Brexit done and won the Red Wall. And they're worried that if they get rid of him, they're actually going to get rid of the one thing that possibly makes the Conservatives competitive for the next election. So I think they move on Boris uh, Johnson at their risk. Okay. And a part of me still thinks he might get away with it. He might pull off one more great con. Rosanna. And we're all going to have to be quite brief, forgive me. I think the issue is not about the irreparable damage he's doing the, to the Conservative Party. It's about the irreparable damage he's doing to the country. He wasn't even fit to lead the country before we went into the pandemic. We've got to remember his track record of homophobia, racism, sexism, misogyny. He got... He got... He got... He's an absolute consistent liar. He's, the people closest to him are now jumping ship. There is absolutely no way he should stay. He missed five Cobra meetings. He said, let the bodies pile high. He okay. doesn't care about us and the country now know it. Victor. Um, well, I think there are three things that are problematic. The first is the moral vacuum at the top of the government. I mean, there is a, you know, there's, there's a moral vacuum. The second is 
I have to tell you as a, as a father, I, I was brought up to tell the truth, take responsibility yeah. and search truth and, and to look for that in the examples of leadership. And what do you tell your kids when, when, you look, when they look up and they see a kind of game being played out? You know, your analogy is very entertaining, but this is the country. And, it, and it's not just about the politics, it's about the moral leadership. It's about, it's about that stuff. So if you want to make the political point, this is what's happened, is people might not have known who Keir Starmer was, frankly, they do now. And even if you replace Boris Johnson, whoever replaces them has now got a, actually an opposition which people kind of know about, partly because of the sort of error. That it's not just an error, it's, it's, it's moral leadership. It's not just about the parties, it's about how you stand. It's about, do you have values? Do you have a moral compass? That's what's important here. And I, I just worry about it turning into a kind of game. It's more important than that. It's about whether we have leadership which has a set of values, has a moral compass, yeah. that can actually be an example to me, you, right. and our children, and okay. young people who want to enter politics. OK, I so want I'm, to hear I'm from the audience as well, Victor, otherwise I'll never get them in. Yes, the woman in the red dress. I find it quite ironic you're talking about us being played. Absolutely, we've been played. But um, that's not by Dominic Cummings, but it's by our Prime Minister. Yeah. Dominic Cummings may be drip, drip, dripping, but it's all truth. Exactly. It's all truth, what he's telling us. It's not fabricated, it's not made up. And the fact that, you know, he fired the person that knew where all the bodies were hidden, well, there we go, that's what happens. Robin. I mean, I think that the issue is, for me, that integrity matters and so does the way people behave. And, and many of the issues we talked about tonight relate to trust. Who do you trust in terms to give you a truthful picture of the situation? And whatever you feel about the current situation, it's only made it a lot harder to communicate the core messages that people need to, say, need to hear. We know that from a recent publication, the, the people who are least willing to get vaccinated are the people who least respect people in public office and the government. And that's only made the job that much yeah. harder. But at the same, at the same time, I, I, obviously, it, it, one shouldn't have to say integrity is important in public life. It plainly is. But we've had prime ministers who have been, have been paragons of morality, like Theresa May, and she was rubbish at the job. Uh, we had Tony Blair, who was directed by a kind of inner, almost religious morality, and he took us to war. Uh, some people calculate that, look, they might not internally trust Boris Johnson, but he gets stuff done. He got yeah, Brexit it, done, he got the yeah. vaccine done, and they'd like to see if he can do levelling up and how to much be, he can actually achieve. To be fair, mm. to be fair um, he made a dis some decision. The NHS got the vaccine done, credit where credit's yeah, due. Yeah, exactly. And I don't yeah. think... I think the problem is, you know, we've got this Prime Minister, not the last Prime Minister's. Two wrongs don't make a right. We need to deal with the situation that's facing us. And people's anger and, and frustration is because of the moral vacuum. That's oh, the problem. Oh, okay. Do you know, I think we might end up talking about this on other programmes as well. What do you think? <laughs> some time to come. I, mean, I don't know. I have no crystal ball. But that is all we've got time for this evening. Thank you very much, my panel, for coming this evening. Thank you to all of you for coming here and making your points. Much appreciated. And, of course, thank you to you at home for watching. From Question Time in Tottenham in North London. <laughs>